What's up guys? It's the true physique and holy shit, listen, I've I think I've done it. I've cracked the code to building massive amounts of muscle. People are always talking about how their workouts make them sore. A harder workout is going to make you more sore. And I thought, you know what? Why don't we cut all that bullshit, skip the middleman, and go straight to the source. More soreness, more pain, more muscle gain. And guys, that's why I'm super excited to announce my new program, Return Physiques, no pain, no gain, 9,000 guarantee to make you bigger than Mr. Olympia in six and a half days. So guys, what the fuck are you waiting for? Get my program right now and I guarantee you will be well on your way to building crazy amounts of- <coughs> I'm gonna get so jacked. <coughs> One of the biggest problems experienced by those newer to fitness is usually an inability to evaluate the quality of their workouts. Now this is a huge pain in the butt because with almost everything else in our lives, we typically get immediate feedback. But when it comes to training, how do you know if what you just did was actually effective at stimulating growth? Now, most of you, I can already assume, you know, I could, I could just sense it, I can predict that you think it's muscle soreness. Plus, that's the title of this video. There's just one small problem, and that is the fact that that is not how your body works. Delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS, refers to the pain and stiffness we experience after working out, which typically comes around 24 to 48 hours after exercise. This is a direct result of exercise-induced muscle damage, and before half of you start freaking out after hearing that scary word damage, relax, it's perfectly normal. This is actually the main stimulus for muscle hypertrophy in the first place. The micro trauma our muscles experience during a workout, this is actually what causes our body to respond by rebuilding that damaged tissue and actually overcompensating a little bit by adding additional muscle tissue when it rebuilds. That way in the future, you are better adapted for whatever strenuous activity caused the damage in the first place. Otherwise known as... I lift things up and put them down. Okay, so at this point you may be thinking, I mean, this all makes sense, right? I mean, if A leads to B and A also leads to C, then aren't B and C, you know, proportional to one another? No. So one of the problems with using muscle soreness as a way to evaluate you know, how much muscle hypertrophy you are stimulating is that soreness is not universal across all people, all training styles, even all muscle groups within the same individual. For example, one thing which people usually incorrectly assume is that muscle soreness is exclusively like a bodybuilding phenomenon, when in reality, more aerobic style exercise, such as long distance running, cycling, you know, things like that, that could actually stimulate a pretty significant amount of soreness as well, despite the fact that, you know, that style of cardiovascular exercise, while excellent for your health, it's not exactly well known for its muscle building ability. One of the weird things about soreness is that there's actually a pretty good amount of variability from person to person. This means that hypothetically, if you took two people and made them exercise with the exact same training program, the same weight, same intensity, same volume, frequency, pretty much everything is the exact same, and then the next day they wake up with completely different levels of muscle soreness. Now you guys may be saying, you know what Igor, that's fine, because you always see on this channel, I'm not supposed to compare person to person anyway, I'm supposed to compare myself to myself, right? And usually that's absolutely true, except in this case, because once again, there's kind of a weird thing when it comes to muscle soreness, because not only is there a good amount of variability from person to person, but also within an individual just comparing muscle to muscle. Using myself as a good real world example of this, when I train muscle groups like my chest, my arms, my legs especially, I usually get a pretty good amount of soreness. But when I train other muscle groups like my back and my shoulders, I don't wanna say there's no soreness whatsoever, but in comparison, it's pretty much like less than half. Now, does that mean I'm working out these muscle groups incorrectly? Am I not working them out hard enough, long enough, you know, not frequently or intensely? 
No, none of those things. It's just that in my case, those muscle groups happen to be less susceptible to muscle soreness despite the exact same overall training strategy. In addition, studies have actually shown that when it comes to soreness, it's felt a lot more when training with eccentric training, which is kind of typically referred to as the negative when you are uh, lengthening the muscle fibers, kind of like when you're lowering the weight. And this is actually the exact opposite of concentric training or contraction where the muscle in question is shortening its fibers. And as you may have guessed, this pretty much makes up 90% of what all of us, myself included, do in the gym. So hypothetically, if you were really concentrated exclusively on getting the most amount of muscle soreness possible, we should be training almost exclusively with negatives, with eccentric training and actual muscle contraction. Who gives a shit? No, you're not going to do that? Yeah, me neither. And finally, the last thing which really does throw kind of a wrench into the whole muscle soreness equals muscle hypertrophy notion. When it comes to soreness, it's actually really decreased in individuals when they train muscle groups more often. This partly falls under what is commonly referred to as the repeated bout effect, where the more a muscle is trained, the more it adapts to reduce further damage from that same exercise. And also this does help explain why high frequency training programs, such as full body training for example, usually this can greatly diminish day-to-day -day muscle soreness. A really good example of this is actually my former Alpha Lee teammate and literally one of the strongest people on the face of the earth, Russell Orhi. I actually remember um, I was watching a video of his a few years back and one of the things that he did and you know partly helped build his ridiculously strong squat is squatting every single day. And one of the things he mentioned in that video is that although it was sort of challenging in the beginning. And I started finding that, you know, after two weeks, my body adjusted. The soreness went away. It was almost, it became almost impossible to make my body sore from squatting. Eventually, it's almost as if his body just got used to it. And that workout to workout day to day soreness, it kind of just went away. But he was still able to gain a tremendous amount of strength. So at this point in the video, I want to take a second to summarize because I'm pretty sure I've thrown a lot of information at you guys. Number one, despite the exact same training style, muscle soreness can vary dramatically from person to person, and number two, from muscle to muscle within one individual. Number three, it decreases with increased training frequency despite that usually being a variable which is very positively correlated with muscle hypertrophy. And finally, number four, you can experience a pretty good amount of soreness from aerobic exercise which which although is great for your overall health, that kind of exercise is usually not well known for its muscle building abilities. So overall, although muscle soreness is not a terrible indicator of workout effectiveness since it does still technically signal the presence of damage within the target muscle, it's far from being the best indicator of workout quality. And to be honest, if you base your entire training style solely off of chasing that post-workout soreness, you know, really living and dying by the whole no pain, no gain mentality, you're probably going to end up disappointed. So guys, one thing I never want to do on this channel is take something, you know, like a certain topic, point out all the problems, and then just screw off and leave you high and dry. We actually do have a very good alternative for evaluating your overall workout quality. And the best way that I could describe this would be to essentially focus on things that you can count, not on things that you can feel. Evaluate it based on things that they're not up for personal interpretation. Are you training with enough reps? Are you going up in weight over time? Are you actually working out with a certain level of intensity that causes you to break a sweat and you know, not work out with that beautiful, sexy fitness model smile where you're working out like you're Derek fucking Zoolander. Because if you're doing all of this and I might add not letting your exercise form break down into complete garbage, then I don't care if you're not sore the next day because numbers do not lie. And guys, this brings me to the last thing I wanna mention in this video, which it shares a lot of parallels with what we're talking about today and you know, overall training, and that's dieting. When we're trying to lose body fat, when we wanna lose weight, I've talked about this a million times on my channel, we all know that we need to stimulate a calorie deficit, we need to burn more energy on a daily basis than we consume in the form of food. And how do we ensure that this happens? You know, are we just going on a day to day or meal by meal basis and judging based on how our bodies feel and based on our hunger levels, whether or not we're losing fat that day? No, we use quantitative you know, analysis. We actually look at these you know, these variables, food intake in terms of calories, macros, protein, carbs, fats, our changes in body weight, and we use that to determine whether or not we are succeeding. 
So the final message I want to impart on you before I end this video is that, look, don't get me wrong, how you feel during and after a workout, it's absolutely important and definitely worth taking into consideration. But when it comes to evaluating whether or not what you're doing in the gym is actually working, there's no way around it. The numbers are king.